I have spent way too much money on this. I think it's needless to say that Gorillaz is my favorite band of all time. They've been there for what feels like forever. And then something about me is I am a collector. Collector who makes really bad habits to try to collect literally everything that I can. So back in November of 2013, I bought the Gorillaz self-titled CD and Demon Days. Meaning that I have almost been collecting gorillas for 10 years. 10 years! I was in middle school! So what does 10 years, thousands of dollars, and a unhealthy obsession get you? Well, I mean, it got me like over 250,000 views on YouTube. And also it allows me to make this video right now, which will hopefully make this all seem worth it other than having it displayed in my room. Also, to act as sort of a tribute to Huda Hoodlum's Revenge, who, I love their channel by the way, you should check it out, made a fantastic Gorillaz Collection video way back in the day. And when I was first really getting into Gorillaz Collecting, that video helped me find a lot of this and uh, just point me in the right direction of where to find this. Without further ado, what's a good jumping off point than starting with the main albums themselves. Also, I really hope you like the makeshift table I made for myself. And starting this all off is the CD that started it all. Gorillaz is self-titled. This is the first CD that I have ever owned. And I have so many nostalgic memories with it. As I mentioned before, I was in middle school. So I had my little CD player and then I listened to it beside my bed. It was, uh, and then also it was the first time I learned about like deep cuts, which are like songs that like aren't necessarily singles. Even though it's not necessarily my favorite album, I still love this album for what it is, all the nostalgic memories that it's brought me, and also, you know, starting Gorillaz, so. Next up is the deluxe edition of Gorillaz is self-titled. Now, this one took forever to find. <laughs> I remember searching for what seems like an eternity for this and finally shelling out like $50 for it, even though it is definitely not worth $50. I'm pretty sure you could find it easily now for like, I don't know, 15 I could be wrong. Um, the only difference between this and the, uh, the standard is the digipack that it comes in. So... Uh, and then it does have more high quality art and also the it has like this little booklet with like little art for each of the each of the songs which i really really like and also some lyrics so any chance to see phase one art is always a blast especially in high quality like this and then now we get into a more recent um, endeavor and that is the Japanese copy of Gorillaz albums. So typically, um, a Japanese release of a Gorillaz album will have some added goodies, I guess you can say. So it comes with the same booklet as the deluxe edition, but it's more flimsy. The other one is like more stiff. It's like made out of a different material, but uh, it's still the same thing on the inside. This one only comes with that booklet, but as you will see later, the Japanese editions get pretty cool. So next up we have the British version of G-Sides. G-Sides is a B-Sides compilation for Gorillaz because Gorillaz didn't sell all that well in Japan when they really wanted to get into that market. So this was kind of like a last hurrah, like please check us out and it worked according to the band it worked I'm not completely sure but it's got some nice art in here this is one of my favorite phase one pieces so next up we have the American version of G-Sides which 
um, replaces a few of the songs. So on the UK version, it had Dracula and Rock the House Radio edit, which was already on the American version. So they released this, which added a game changer. Latin Simone English version. So it, look, it's the same art on the inside, although the book is made out of some more like sturdy material than the UK version. Next up we have the deluxe edition of Laika Come Home, which whenever I got was like absolutely tore to shreds. So like there's like a piece there's like a piece of tape right here to um, to try to like fix it. <laughs> I'm not necessarily a big fan of this album. So I don't really care about getting the the standard edition. I might one day just to like have it in the collection, but as for right now, I'm fine with this. I mean, it, the only difference is it's in a jewel case instead of a digipack. Uh, and also, it doesn't come with this poster here. Oh, it's not a poster. Oops. <laughs> it's a little booklet full of art. In the same exact order as I got Gorillaz is self-titled, I also got Demon Days. And let me just tell you, whenever I first heard this album, it was like love from first sight. It's out in my car. <laughs> it has a really cool fold out with art for every single one of the songs. So next up is the deluxe edition of Demon Days, which is just so, so cool. This blew my mind when I first saw it. So you pull it out of this piece of plastic right here and then you have these two pieces. This one not only has an alternative back cover, but also how you get the CD is you open it up to reveal each of the band members and voila, there's the CD. Not out in my car this time. <laughs> um, and then let's say you don't want 2D on top, then you could just fold it in a way where Noodle is on top and then you put it back in. Awesome. So, the other thing that it comes with is a little a little booklet showing the art once again with a little bit of lyrics and the credits right there, which again is really, really cool. But then, once you get to the end, it has a DVD, which has all of the music videos for Phase 2, right? It's got the Feel Good Inc. video, the making of animatic, uh, audio commentary from the band, um, Gorilla's Talent Quest, a g by animation, and Gorilla's On Set, g by animation, along with the Swagga. So it only has Feel Good Inc., but still, the fact that it has the animatic, like, th that's really cool. I wonder if that's the first time that that's ever, like, been seen. So next up is not just one, but two Gorilla's Japanese CDs. Um, so one of these is supposed to be like a super special edition, but I'm not for sure exactly which one. Um, so from a track list standpoint, the only difference is this one has people and this one has Hong Kong Live. So not really too much different on the track list side of things, but let's see if we could get into some of the cooler aspects. So for one, I just really like how this is entirely in white, this one with the inverted colors. Um, does this come with it? Yep. <laughs> so um, this is the first to come with some stickers. So this one has, does it come with anything? So this one uh, just comes with the, the booklet no stickers, so I guess that's why that's the, the premium edition. Next up we have D-Sides. So this is the um, the G-Sides equivalent to um, Demon Days, where it's a B-Sides album of songs that didn't quite make the cut, except for this time, it's like so, so, so much better. Uh, let's see here, I'm always worried about this. Yeah, here we go. Uh, so it has two discs, 
uh, the first disc having like the songs and then the second disc having a bunch of remixes. I'm not necessarily a fan of the remixes. I have never actually listened to it all the way through. I'm just not a fan. But the art in this is also really cool because it's like showing like a behind the scenes like, you know, these are sketches for the b-sides for the song that didn't quite make the cut so these are like this is art that's you know not complete i think it's really cool so next up we have the d-sides deluxe edition and yeah this was probably the first deluxe edition that i got because of how cool it is unfortunately me being a i think i was a sophomore in high school at the time didn't have money to get like a full copy so instead what I had to get was it's missing a few things. So you open it, it got this really cool, really slick Pazuzu like case that has the CDs in it. Um, you have the same booklet as before. Uh, you have a little patch and then you have some, some neat little art pieces. Um, so, it, I'm missing some stickers and some pins. That's all I'm missing. So, I mean, I, I'm fine, but like I, I can live without it. However, one day I would like to get a full, complete D-Sides Deluxe Edition. However, this is just cool enough, like on its own, that like I'm, I'm fine with it. So, finally, for Phase 2, we have the D-Sides Deluxe Edition which uh, comes with two extra songs, uh, Samba at 13 and film trailer music, along with the Rocket video, if you like put it in like a computer or something. So starting with phase three, we have Plastic Beach. So I didn't buy this one at the same time, but um, I just uh, bought this later on after getting uh, Gorillas and Demon Days because I didn't think it was as iconic as the first two because I've never seen this cover before. I'd seen the other two, but not this one. So I was like, okay, so this one must not be as good, so I'm not going to get it. And boy was I wrong. <laughs> Next up we have the um, Plastic Beach Deluxe Edition. Now I have a funny story about this one. So, um, Whenever I was initially sorting after these, I bought this one deluxe edition for Plastic Beach that had the Dusk album cover from iTunes. And it included the iTunes exclusive um, tracks. You know, the, the, I can't remember what they're called. There's Pirates Progress, and then there's three, like, it's like the, the moon, like, it'll be on screen. Well, I found out that that wasn't the right deluxe edition, so I sold it to my friend in high school. I think I was a freshman at the time, freshman or sophomore, um, so that I could get enough money to buy this. And I have never seen that since. I look online endlessly for it. I look on Discogs, I look on eBay, I look on wikis, and I can't find anything about it. It was in a case like this, so I think it was fan-made, but still, I would love to have it. I got in contact with my friend recently to try and to try and find it or try to see if he can uh, like sell it back to me, but he can't find it anywhere. Oh, something else too is the only like difference out of these two is other than the packaging is this one comes with a making of Plastic Beach documentary, which I always love. So next up, we have the Japanese edition of Plastic Beach, which has a daytime album cover, unlike the sunset and the, the nighttime of others. Uh, this one comes with Pirate's Progress, so at least I'll have that one on CD. The CDs come in these plastic coverings, which are just okay. But um, let's see if it comes with anything, and I already know that it does. Stickers, once again, I love me some stickers. Uh, it's got this little little pamphlet. Um, it's got the ooh, it's got a poster. 
with this piece of art, which I really, really like. Uh, on the back, it looks like just to be some information about gorillas, although it has an inverted picture of Cyborg Noodle for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> See, here we got the same, is this the same booklet from before? Yeah, this is the same booklet from the Standard American. And then finally, we've got, it looks like some more lyrics or information in Japanese. And finally, the last really cool thing that I wanted to mention about these is sometimes it'll come with American lyrics as well. So like American, <laughs> it'll come with English lyrics as well. Um, some of them are wrong. I have looked through them and there are some obvious wrong ones, but however, it's just cool to have, you know? So next we have a very divisive Gorillaz album in the fall, which as many Gorillaz fans know was made on an iPad while Damon was touring the Escape to Plastic Beach tour. There's literally no art except for the, the front one, front piece. Next up we have uh, Gorillaz, the singles collection. Now this is actually a uh, Chinese copy. <laughs> Um, I'm not for sure exactly how I ended up with it, but it's the same exact thing as an American copy. Uh, it's got this really cool collage art for the, like, for the theming of the entire thing. Um, I also really like the CD, which is a, a banana. Uh, I was hoping that they would do this for their 20th anniversary as well, because this was in celebration of their 10th anniversary. They put all their singles on, on a CD and... Uh, like, I mean, I, I think it's really cool. Packaging is really cool. It's a good celebration of their first three albums. So here we have the deluxe edition of the singles collection, which is in a digipack, just like Gorillaz is self-titled in Plastic Beach. Uh, so more high quality art. Uh, the, it has the same CD, but then the big things are so we have this this poster that you could hang up, although in my opinion it's way too cluttered and way too small to be considered a poster, so maybe it's just like a little, little art piece. But also you've got a DVD with, if I'm not mistaken, and this time for, um, for sure, yeah, all of the music videos from Tomorrow Comes Today all the way to Don Comatic. However, this is literally the worst possible way to listen to the or to watch these music videos because some of them are in the wrong aspect ratio and they're so low quality. I don't know, just I mean it's cool to have it. Do not get me wrong. I would prefer to just watch them on YouTube. So next up we have the absolutely beefy Japanese edition. Like um, I don't know how to describe it. Is the yeah the case is is like bigger it's like longer and it just feels so much heavier to hold <laughs> um let's see here it comes with the bonus tracks are feel good ink noodles demo and the stylo labyrinth snes remix which is really cool i love the noodles demo of feel good ink it's got the same booklet as the the standard it's also got this little little piece right here which I think is really cool, that I thought was fan art when I first saw it, not gonna lie. Um, stickers. Again, always love stickers. Probably use them one day, but I don't know. It, it's all phase one stickers, so that's pretty cool. And then, does it have it? Yep, English lyrics, along with Japanese lyrics. With the singles collection closing out phase three, now we get into phase four with Humans, which had this really, really funny prank to not only release one CD, but with, with like one band member, but all of them. This is when I knew I was insane, is whenever I went after all of them. So all of these, all of these look the same on the inside. Uh, it's got the got the CD, and then it's got this little little book that has. Um, all the credits in it. Theoretically, you could fold it in a way to where you could get all of them, especially since, like I said, like all of these are the 
are the same on the inside and back. It's just like the front. Theoretically, I could just put Murdoch right here. And then this right here is the deluxe edition of of humans, which I like. Uh, it's weird that like it's so dark compared to all the others. I thought it, it must be a printing thing, but so you open it up and only Noodle is on the deluxe edition. So that's why I didn't find her in these CDs. Uh, so this comes with a little art book for phase four, which 2017 me was very disappointed in because I, I follow Jamie Hewlett on Instagram and I religiously keep up with his posts. So I'd already seen all of these. I was hoping for something new, but now in retrospect and now that I'm older, I mean, oh, I, I love it. I think it's cool. I think I remember thinking that this was a better album cover for humans. I thought that should have been the CD so that we didn't have to worry about this mess. And then this is also where we began the terrible, terrible trend of putting two CDs in deluxe editions. One for the standard album and one for like the six bonus tracks. Like I'm never going to listen to this. So why don't you just put it on the normal CD? I, I don't know. It makes me mad. Um, but hey, it's nice to have anyway, right? So next up we have the Japanese deluxe edition of Humans, which already is like the I guess the printing quality over there is better because like uh, that's how it's supposed to look. So the difference between this is if I am I, I honestly I don't remember. I know that there's a few extra bonus tracks on on this CD which does give it a little bit more like worth. But once again we have two separate CDs and then in here we have Again, same booklet. So the extra songs are Andromeda Dram Special and Busted in Blue. It's on screen. Sorry, I'm not going to butcher that. Next up, we have The Now Now. So The Now Now is very underrated, in my opinion, and it is also out in my car. <laughs> I just have a bunch of CDs out there because I have like an older car and I don't know if like my Bluetooth Spotify thing will stop working. So I have like a bunch of my favorite albums out there just in case. So neat little booklet for a neat little album. Love it. Next up we have the Japanese copy of the Now Now which doesn't add any extra songs. Could you imagine if they added Heartbeat to it? The, um, actually got the CD in here this time so you can have a look at it. And if I'm not mistaken, this didn't really add anything either. I th yeah, it's on a, a really thin booklet of Japanese text, so. Next up is Song Machine, which I am calling Song Machine, not Song Machine Season 1 Strange Times because are we ever going to get a Season 2? Who knows? Um, one of my, probably my favorite back to a, um, to a CD. I love this, this art right here. Um, Song Machine Season 1. And then it comes with a little booklet. This album is definitely like up to quality with say Demon Days and Plastic Beach. So I'm very, very like happy with this album this album is so good just wish it had a little bit more thematic elements but i guess that is the thematic element is that there isn't any so next up we are going straight into the japanese deluxe edition for song machine because the only difference between this and the american is that it has one extra track which i mean hey i'm going to get this anyway what's the point of going out and getting an american version too if there's like no reason to uh, it comes with this little booklet right here with lyrics, so that's always a plus. No sticker though, however it does come with just an instrumental track, but I always like that. It does look like there is a little bit more art in this booklet, uh, which is really weird because the art that they used is like already right here, so like what's the point of putting like the same ones, like there's, I, I don't know. And finally, that brings us to present day with Cracker Island. Now, I don't think, I do know that they did release a Japanese edition, which has 
um, crocodillas on it. Um, but I will get it in the future, but not right now. So I'm not necessarily a fan of how like small the CD is, especially when you compare it to the to the other ones. So it comes with this little little booklet. It's got some Cracker Island art. And then it has the CD. And that's pretty much it for it. And that's pretty much it for all the standard albums. So let's get into the vinyls. So once again, uh, this was the very first vinyl that I've ever had. And um, it doesn't necessarily play the best. <laughs> I have found that um, gorillas are so bass heavy, heavy that uh, it sometimes makes the the needle skip over, and it's kind of annoying. But I've I've fixed it, so it skips very rarely now. But I still prefer to listen to this on on like Spotify or CD um, instead of on vinyl, which is typically how I prefer to listen to my music, especially at home. So it's got all the art from the CD, however, it's now blown up to vinyl scale. <laughs> so all the art is like an even higher quality than it was on the CD, which is really, really nice. As I said before, I just love seeing high quality phase one art. You don't really see it all that often, so. Ugh. Next up we have the, ugh, the 20th anniversary edition of Gorillaz, which I, Apparently, like I've seen online, that's been getting some flack, but I, I personally like it. It, uh, it adds so much to the lore, and then also once again, adds so many unseen Phase One art, and I, I just love, I, I love seeing it. So, not only that, not only do I get this, like really cool little top secret file here which like plays along with the the story of gorillas but I get the gorillas vinyl well, G sides like a come home and also a live performance a live performance from 2001 and a bunch of demos that were I assume at the time not released which is absolutely like crazy I love that also the demo I don't know how well you can see it the demos has this really cool like art on the back of uh, the, the 2d art from the back of phase or gorillas album so continuing we have Gorillaz G-Sides on vinyl, which is the UK edition, which is the version that was given out all around the world, which kind of upsets me, but because, you know, I love Latin Simone, but, you know, it is what it is. I just love having it. I, I remember I was there. I The closest record shop is two hours away, and I called them beforehand to ask if they would have it. They said that they that they did, because it was released on Record Store Day. It was given out to to record store owners, and I made sure to be down there uh, insanely early to get it. And I did. I got the last copy of G Sides and uh, a copy of something that you'll see later. So next up, we have the reissue of Demon Days, um, because the so I thought I had the original. But it turns out that it was a fake. That was that's typical for getting the 2005 copy of Demon Days on vinyl. But it was a fake, so I ended up giving that away, and I got this instead, which I think is fine because I love colored vinyl, and these are colored. Plus, I really love having this in high quality because I love this album cover. This is one of my favorite album covers of all time. Next up, we have the three vinyl D-sides 
which was also released on the same day as G-Sides, the same record day, the record store day, which I believe was in 2020. So that just makes things even better. So three vinyls have this really cool, like, I, like try, like fold thing. And it has all the, all of these sides, which is really, really nice. I, I, like I said, these sides is up there in my favorites, even compared to like the main albums. Also, this thing is just really like thick and hefty. Next up we have Plastic Beach, which is the daytime cover from the Japanese edition. Um, once again, just typical album. It's all the art from the CD just blown up so that, you know, it fit on a, on a vinyl. It just makes me wish that they would release art like this more often, you know? Because, like, if they obviously have it. So why not take all the other unseen or previously, like, low-quality art and, like, blow it up and, I don't care, put it on, you know, normally we'll put it on Instagram, it'll press it but just put it online somewhere put it in a book somewhere I mean they did that later on but like they could like make so many books with like just blown up art next up is the fall nothing's nothing special in the slightest just well I guess it does have this piece of art which is seen on the revolving doors Amarillo single. So rounding out phase three, I have Gorillaz the Singles Collection on 7-inch vinyl, which is, once again, one of those items that I wanted really, really bad when I first found out about it. Uh, but this one didn't come for a long time because it was very, very expensive. So I had to wait till the time was right to get this, but it's the Singles Collection all in these neat little, little vinyl cases. And um, I, I just love this so much. In my opinion, this is like, it doesn't really replace the vinyl singles because I think I will get that one day. But for now, this is really cool. Next up we have Humans, which is not the original copy that I had when I initially bought it in 2017. I bought this not too long ago uh, as, because I sold my original to get the deluxe copy, which I'll be showing you later. Um, again, I was a high schooler, didn't have much money. Literally, I like got five dollars a week for money, like for lunch and stuff, and I um, just saved it. I saved it so that I could buy more Gorilla stuff. Next up, we have the deluxe edition of Gorilla, the Humans album, which doesn't come with the deluxe tracks. All it does is come with this little art book, which absolutely blew my mind when I first saw it. Like, I had to have this so much that I, like, sold my my copy as I previously mentioned to have it and then I ended up being disappointed in it because it's all art that I've seen before because I follow Jamie Hewlett but once again I have grown up and I appreciate it for what it is now also it's supposed to have a cover but I literally have no idea where it went so and besides I think this stands out better compared to the other one so as many of you are aware I have a gorilla's Instagram account where I show off my my collection and if not now you know I'm sorry that's my dark little secret uh, I've kept this one from you because I wanted it to be a surprise for this video this is something that I recently got this is the ultra deluxe edition of humans Whew, it's a I think there's 20 vinyls in here each song has their own vinyl and each each b-side is an actual b-side a song that was made for humans but didn't quite make the cut uh, here is what 
this was supposed to be. This is what the, the cover was supposed to look for it, look like for it. But I don't know where it is. So it's the same art book as before. This is. The uh, only thing is, is there's no um, vinyls in the front and back like the other one. Because they are all right here in their own special colored vinyl. So this one has intro, I switched my robot off in Ascension. In the world. In this neat little blue vinyl here. And then on the back has Long Beach, which is a song that didn't make it. There's a... Interesting. The back of them. The back of them are just like just art that we've already seen before, sometimes inverted. Really cool. So next up we have the Now Now Deluxe Vinyl, which has this really cool holographic cover. Um, and then also this really cool alternate back, which I really like. Uh, inside we have the the standard vinyl, just like how you were to buy it at the store, which is why I don't have like another one. Um, if I'm not mistaken, it comes in a really cool. So here's here's the art. Yeah, it comes in a blue vinyl, which is really nice because that's the now now's colors is um, blue and pink. Um, got these little art pieces, which are always nice. Got a download code, uh, some pins with the, with the like sayings they've been saying during that time. Uh, one of them is currently on a hat of mine. And then this is the reason why I had to saw it after it. This is a an exact replica of 2D's journal during the Now Now era, which is uh, has the lyrics and also just a bunch of mindless doodles, it seems, and like stickers and also stuff to allude to him actually missing Murdoch because at this time he was in jail. Uh, so, uh, honestly, it's a little bit disappointing because there's a lot of, like, empty pages like this. It, it's obvious that this was, like, a last-minute thing to get people to buy it. But, hey, I, I still like it. I just wish that it could have been more. I wish that there was, like, more, like, stuff in it. But, still like it. Next up, we have the Song Machine vinyl standard once again has this art blown up so it's really really nice um has this piece of art which i think was the first time that the full art was revealed like it was teased but um the first time it was revealed was in this like vinyl sleeve which is really cool wish they would have done that more often honestly and then now we have an absolute behemoth with the Song Machine Deluxe Vinyl. I think this is like a super deluxe vinyl. Which immediately, right out of the gate, has some art prints. Which is really nice because at the time they were like selling art prints and this has a lot of them in it. It's, I don't think it's quite as big, but um, just having these is really, really cool. I really wish I could have gotten them, but man, they were so expensive and they released a new one every episode. There was literally no way just for me to have on like a shelf or something, like, or put up like this, how like it rarely gets seen. And I, I just wasn't spending that much money on it. So this is the deluxe vinyl right here. You could buy this separately, um, which has um, an art book in it, along with the vinyls. These are where you find the vinyls some more art prints as as well but uh yeah it's, a, it's an art book akin to the the humans art book what's really cool is i believe it was this one is this cd right here has 
all of the songs. Even the deluxe edition. So once Momentary Bliss is done, it just goes straight into Opium. Which is not what the, the, like the deluxe CD can say. Another thing too is it has an extra vinyl with those tracks. Like if you wanted the Humans Deluxe tracks like Out of Body and A Circle of Friends, then you can't get them on vinyl. But this one actually does and also puts them on the right CDs, which is crazy. However, we haven't even gotten to the coolest part of this yet. So, what we now have is 11 individual vinyls with each each vinyl having a song from Song Machine, so this is Strange Times, but then the back has the instrumental. That alone makes this package worth it. And they're each in their own individual colors. It's just, and the, all of the standard songs are here. Now here I can understand why they don't have the deluxe tracks because this is really expensive to produce, but it's still like like amazing that they did this. This is my favorite, like Gorillas package, I guess you could say. This is my favorite vinyl. This is my favorite like deal. If you were to get anything, it would be this right here. And then it also comes with a. comes with a freaking music box. And then now we get into Cracker Island, which, oh yeah, I forgot, it comes with this, this poster, which is really cool for a standard edition to come with, or you could put it this way with this, which I, I love the, this shot of the band. I was betting that they would make four separate CDs with these being the, the album covers. I was betting it. But we didn't, which is nice on my end. But it would have been really cool, not gonna lie. Then, standard vinyl. Next up, we have the Cracker Island Deluxe Edition, which is an absolute mess <laughs> because they don't have anything to hold it together. So, does this one have. No, okay. So, first things first, we have the uh, a Cracker Island single CD with this exclusive piece of art, which is cursed but lovely at the same time. Uh, we have this little, little booklet, really cool. We have a standard CD, so it's got the, got the songs on it. Uh, it's not as robust as the, the typical CD. Um, we've got some more art prints and stickers. I don't know why I said art prints because art prints are right here, but stickers and then some art prints for this phase's art. And then finally we have, oh, no, not finally. So we have this, this vinyl right here. And finally, I'm just going to put up a picture so I don't have to <laughs> deal with unwrapping this and putting it back but this uh, that's the Murdoch poster from the um, from the standard vinyl just blown up really really huge and then finally for vinyls we have the Cracker Island 7 inch vinyls which was insane to me whenever they first announced it but I, now I think it's cool like for the singles collection it makes sense and then for song machine it makes sense because there's basically a bunch of singles but um, so this comes with every song on its own individual um, colored vinyl but then the back side is like an art print which is really really cool so I don't have to worry about getting all of them out I'm just gonna put up a picture from my Instagram with all of them, it's, it's just it's really cool. I'm really happy, although I do not understand why they just didn't put the instrumentals on the back, because literally we have the art 
right there and I would have preferred the instrumentals because I just love instrumentals. So with that rounding out all the vinyls, now let's get into the cassettes. Um, I'm not necessarily a huge cassette collector. The only reason I have these is because it's gorillas and I want to have like literally everything. <laughs> but um, yeah, this is in some pretty, pretty rough shape. It's still got the same art from, from the CD, but condensed to fit in a, uh, in a cassette. So this was relatively easy to find. Uh, and then Demon Days is too, but it's really expensive, so I don't find myself like going after that anytime soon. Uh, and then they haven't made any until song, well actually until the now now. However, I did find these fan made cassettes, which I think are really cool. They're, they are really cheap and they just add to the collection. So this is Plastic Beach, a fan made Plastic Beach. So. You've got the cassette here, and then you can pull this out. It's got the it's got the track listing, and then it's got like a bunch of plastic beach art. Uh, however, it does have some fan art, which would never be in an official thing. However, I still think it's cool. Something that you would only get with these fan made cassettes. Uh, next up is a fan made humans cassette. Now I haven't listened to this all the way through I think I listened to submission just to see if it worked and uh, yeah I can see where I listened to some so I'm not for sure exactly how it sounds I'm not for sure if literally everything is on it but the track listing says it does and so once again just hear some some art and here is a fan made the now now so I tried everything in my power to get it when it was first coming out like the the official they officially made one however i just didn't have the money for it and it had already sold out by the time i did have the money and then now it's super expensive i haven't found it which i haven't really been on the lookout for it recently it's not really it's not really something i'm starting after right now but i have this to hold me over until then I will get it one day, just to complete the collection, but for now I'm fine. <clears throat> so that's all the fan-made cassettes. Uh, like I said, they did make an official one for the Now Now, I just don't have. But I did make it my mission to get all of the Song Machine cassettes. Now these are really, really cool, because not only are they themed after like each member, like there's four of them, so this one's based off of 2D, it's themed after him, but also it's the track listing is different per character based on their personal tastes. So here's Russell's. Um, because Song Machine is like, kind of like, you know, like a bunch of singles, this makes sense. Like it's, it's really cool to have like each character have their own individual like playlist. And some even having some deluxe tracks that you would, you know, only find on the deluxe edition of these, of the album, which I find really, really cool. So, when they did the same exact thing with Cracker Island, I was a little confused, because Cracker Island was supposed to be, um, you know, like a return to an album, so why would each character need their own personal playlist? Well, turns out, I was wrong. They are all the same cassette, just uh, themed to each character again, which, again, I think is cool. And also there's a, another reason it's cool I'll bring up here in a second. But, um, so I didn't see a, a need for these being, like there being four of them. However, it's still cool. I'm just glad that gorillas are making a, well, it seems like everyone's making a return to cassettes. But if you collect all four of them, then you could put them in a, like in an order to have Pazuzu, the, their little sign that they use, like the, the logo for the last cult. So I thought that was pretty cool. And with the end of the cassettes, uh, that's the end of the the main albums like that's 
the, every copy of Gorillas and Demon Days that I own. However, we're still not done with the music side of things because they released radio singles. These are basically just the, the singles, right? On their own individual disc. Um, except for this one is actually an EP, which has more than one. So it has Tomorrow Comes Today, Rock the House, Latin Simone, 1-2-D-3, and the video for Tomorrow Comes Today. Uh, this is one that came out. I think, now do not quote me on this, I could be wrong, but I think radio stations had these so that they could play their songs. Uh, I really like the, the unique art on each of these. Yeah, you could also op take them out and open them like they're like a little tiny booklet to reveal some more art and some credits and stuff. So this has Clint Eastwood, the Clint Eastwood uh, remix, and then Dracula along with the video. Yeah, this is where the term A-sides and B-sides come in. Because before, singles were handed out on vinyl. And the A-side would be the song. So like this, the A-side for this would be Rock the House. But if there's any extra songs, it would be put on the B-side. So for this, it would be Ghost Train, which... Both that and Dracula were eventually seen on G-Sides, the B-Sides album. So this is Rock the Houses. Okay, looks like there's no art in this one, just got a image of Dell. Here is 192000. If I'm not mistaken, yeah, there's a, um, a lot of these also double as video. So if you put this in your like computer, then it would pull up the video. Um, Although this one has the making of 192000 instead of the actual music video, which is a little strange. But, oh, I, I love this piece of art. This one, as for the B-sides, has the 192000 Soul Child remix and Left Hand Suzuki Method. And that's all of Phase 1 singles, so now we get into Phase 2 with Feel Good Inc. With Spitting Out the Demons and Bill Murray as the B-sides. what the inside looks like so next up and the first one to get like an actual jewel case instead of like these these little things that don't even have a back to them is dare now they released several versions of this but I only needed one uh, and each of them had different b-sides I think so this one's got a uh, highway under construction and dare soul wax remix so this is what the the inside looks like no no art here next up in a return to the to before is dirty harry with no back this is what that looks like and then i love i love this piece of art because a lot of these singles have some art that rarely ever gets seen and this is this is one of them next up is el manana along with kids with guns so this is like a double a side um, but it does have the B-side, Stop the Dams, which is from D-sides. Uh, also, this has the winners of the um, Search for a Star contest. So, that, that's always cool. I, I really like that. I really like how they interacted with the community back then. So, if you don't know, there's like, a, like an animation that someone made that they put on. And then like some art. And one other thing, but I can't remember. So next up, we have Stylo, now entering phase three, Plastic Beach. Um, and this is the image of 2D I was talking about. I love this image, and you hardly ever see it because, like, I think it's like exclusive to this right here. No one, nowhere else really uses it. Uh, this is what the um, CD looks like and it's kind of cool. I really like the the logo. It's kind of like a more like a two ta 2010 Like rendition of the original gorillas logo with the, like the spray paint. I think that's cool. Oh, it's also on the front here Next is on melancholy hill with Which oh wait, hold on. what's the b-side on this one? Oh, this, this includes the radio edit, the album version, and the instrumental, which is awesome. And then, so does this one. This one is the same thing. A picture of Noodle floating on the back. What the CD looks like.
super fast jellyfish. This one doesn't have a radio edit, however it does have uh, an instrumental CD. Uh, Dawn Comatic, with the uh, instead of having the instrumental as the B sides, it has a Joker remix. Here's this, and then here's the back. Uh, I'm not exactly for sure where that's from. I think that might be from another art piece. I'm I'm not for sure, or if that was made specifically for this. The CD kind of reminds me of like a Wii game disc, you know, like how, like especially the early Wii where it like. Like it was like mainly just like a few colors. And finally, for the singles we have Revolving Doors and Amarillo from The Fall, which are the on only two songs that you should really sought after. So if I listen to The Fall, this is typically what I put on. Just kidding, not really. That's all the music, other than one little thing later, but we'll get to that. Um, so now, let's talk about the visual side of Gorillaz and their DVDs. Yeah, Gorillaz released some DVDs throughout the years, and honestly, I wish that they would bring these back. Especially this first one, uh, Gorillaz Phase 1 Celebrity Takedown. This is a DVD where you explore Kong Studios through the menus, and you go into like each character's room, and each room represents like a different music video. Really, really cool. Wish they would bring it back, and which they did for Phase 2 with Slobo to Hades. It's the same thing except for um, you are exploring a ruined Kong Studios because during Phase 2 it got overrun by zombies. Uh, and now it's Phase 2's music videos. Next up is Demon Days Live, which is their iconic live performance of the entire Demon Days album in Manchester Opera House um, on DVD. What's really cool about this though is you can choose to watch the, the concert or you could choose to only watch the visuals that they put like up on the screen which I personally think is really really cool and they need to do that soon <laughs> with their newer concerts. And finally, we have Bananas, which is a documentary through Phase 1 and 2. And also, this officially cleared up that in Dirty Harry, they say, I need a gun to keep myself among instead of to keep myself from harm. So that's all the DVDs. So now let's get into books. This is Rise of the Ogre, which is a huge part of Gorilla's lore. This is basically the Gorilla's Phase 1 and 2 textbook. Um, this told all of the lore from the very beginning up until Phase 2, the end of Phase 2. Uh, this has a lot of never-before-seen art, and uh, um, it's just... Oh, I can't even see it. It's just really, really cool in general to read. Next up, and this is the only one I have of these, is a magazine. Um, I do want to collect more Gorillaz magazines, especially like at least one for every phase. I uh, find like my favorite cover and, um, and get it because I think it's cool. I uh, just, this is for humans. It's just a few pages of Gorilla's content, but... Eh. Next up is... Oof, that was loud. Jamie Hewlett's art over the last 20 years. Now, this isn't entirely Gorilla's. However, Gorilla's do have a huge section of their own. And uh, it's where a lot of images were seen in really high quality and so, yeah, really cool. It's just really cool to see all of Jamie's work, like even outside of Gorillaz. Like Tank Girl, before they created Gorillaz, is just straight up the phase one art style and I love it. 
And finally, look at how big this is. I didn't, I could not even begin to guess how big this was going to be. But this is the Gorilla's Almanac, released in uh, 2020. So it's a huge, I, I, this is awesome. I love this. I enjoy just pulling it out from time to time and just reading everything because it's just so, it's so gorillas. Like there's a bunch of these like, um, like 2D, oh yeah, like this. Oh, I love this, this Plastic Beach Holidays, which is really funny because at the end of Song Machine, they kind of destroyed it. So like there's this comic book here that, like shows what 2D was up to in between phase uh, three and four, even though it's just a delusion. I still think it's really cool. Um, there's like this ad. Uh, this is what I was talking about. Um, how 2D do you do? Where he just like asks these different like collaborators on like just random questions. Like what's the best uh, sandwich feeling? And it's just, there's just a bunch of cool stuff like this, like the Murdoch script. And then eventually you just get into just straight up art, which is always beautiful to see, especially when it's this huge and you can like really see every detail. And this goes up to phase seven song machine. And then also it came with, with this, which are some phase one prints. Uh, I don't, I think that's all that's in here. There might, I think there's some stickers too. Oh wait, they also, during the Song Machine era, yeah, little little side thing, they released some stickers. Like uh, each band member had their own like set of stickers. I uh, only got 2D and Murdoch because I didn't want to spend a lot of money on just stickers. But uh, I keep them in here just because it also comes with this sticker pack. Yeah, this is actually like some stickers. But it also comes with these Phase 1 prints which are really, really nice. I just about forgot about <sighs> the Gorillaz art book, which might be one of the best things Gorillaz has done, if I'm being 100% honest. So they got, well, the, not only is there brand new art from Jamie Hewlett, but the main focus for this is Fans drew these. Fans drew a good, like, a, a, a 90% of this book. So this is all just fan il illustrations. Okay, so before we get into the super, super expensive stuff, I would like to go over just some oddball things that I've collected throughout the years. Not in any particular order because I just kind of threw them on the couch and I'm just going to grab them and show you which one. So first up, we have a, a Cracker Island water bottle. It was very, very expensive, and I got this at their concert in 2022. But uh, it's metal. <laughs> That's really all I can say about it. It's an expensive water bottle. Probably never going to get used because I don't want anything happening to this. I paid too much for it. So it's just going to sit on my shelf and look cool. Uh, iPhone cases throughout the years. Yeah, I'm really grasping for straws here. Uh, so back in high school, I had uh, an iPhone 5 with, and I used this as the as the case, and then I upgraded to I don't remember, but I used this for the case. So yeah. Okay, no longer grasping for straws here. I will show you now. Gorilla's trading cards, or not tra trading cards, playing cards. Uh, this was released during the Now Now, which is why I didn't have any money for the for the cassette. I thought this was way cooler until I actually saw them. So yeah, they're just playing cards, but like the King, Queen, Joker, and, uh, um, and Ace have been replaced with like Gorilla's art. Although I will have to say that putting Ace on Ace was really cool. Uh, I just think that they could have done more with it. The Gorillas Now Now G-Shock watch. The, I used to wear this everywhere I go, everywhere I went when I first got this. I think it was 2019. 
uh, and then I eventually I stopped wearing it because I didn't want anything happening to it. Because uh, it's, it's a really, really nice watch. But, um, I used to wear a watch all the time, but I don't anymore. I have this little 2D statue I bought off of, of Etsy, which is uh, uh, really, really nice. I think it was 3D printed and hand painted. Uh, I could be wrong, but um, I still like it nonetheless. This is a little cup holder that my cousin made me. Uh, I rarely ever use it because I don't use cup holders, but I use it to hold all the little, like I use it to hold my, um, uh, my phone cases and some more things that I'll get into here in a second. Uh, next up, and this is the last CD music related thing, is H-Sides, which doesn't exist. So like there is, it's a Stoopy and to, uh, Tobai project, I hope I said that right. They put together this track listing of a bunch of B-sides um, from humans and put it on this disc. So what I did was I printed it out. I printed it out myself and uh, um, made like a, made like a, my own H-side CD. So I printed out this booklet that uh, uh, to kind of match the feel of an actual um, of an actual CD. Um, yeah, I think it's really cool. Uh, huge props to the people who made it, the people who designed it. Um, only thing is, is they put a um, Kali Ucha song. I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, called In My Dreams, that's not a human's B-side, that's like an actual song of hers that Damon Albarn was on. Next up is, <laughs> is Gorillaz Red Bull. A uh, Red Bull collaborated with Gorillaz back in 2017 to uh, make limited edition Red Bull cans. And they were primarily sold at the Demon Days Festival. But uh, um, uh, I think that's where this one came from. I had to order it online. Um, I can only imagine what that tastes like now. Probably been out of date for what five years. Uh, next up is some paintings that an old friend of mine painted for me for for Song Machine. It's really, really well made. Really, really well painted. I really love the the line work on it, and it's just painted really well. Really nice. Next up is something that is fleeting, and I'm really really sad about it. I'm trying to find a way to preserve it. I think I'm gonna buy a, a, um, a frame, and I don't even know if you can see it. Might have to take a picture, or like show you what I put on Instagram, is the Gorillas Reject False Icons tickets. Uh, these are the tickets that they printed out for me whenever I went and watched a movie, and of course I kept it. So I put it on my shelf, but it's starting to wither away. So I'm gonna have to find a way to, to preserve it. So finally we have calendars for 2021 and 2022. So this one is based off of Song Machine with everything, like all the, everything being up top here, like being based off of Song Machine. And then this one was to celebrate their 20th anniversary in 2022 of all things. I would expect it to be in 2020 or 2021, but um, so this is just so like this goes throughout their history of album covers and art like throughout the ages. Although one thing I do not understand is they put Monday first. It does, the week doesn't start with Sunday, it starts with Monday. And that was really like off-putting at first. It took a little while to get used to. And finally, we get to the best part of this video, in my opinion, the coolest things, and also the most expensive. And that are, that is, the Kid Robot figures, where I almost have a complete collection. So, whenever I first saw these guys, I was blown away by how tall they are, how big they are. Each of these set me back like 
at least $200 each because they're so rare and hard to find. Russell, I believe, was like 150 because he's in some pretty rough shape. Uh, I tried to uh, um, to clean him up a little bit, but I I just I, I'm did nothing worked. I tried a lot. Murdoch, I didn't get till very recently. Uh, I I was on the hunt for him for literal years. I've been on the hunt for these all of these for literal years. They uh, they're just so elusive and so expensive that literally you just have to wait for the perfect time to be able to get them. So next up we have Kid Robot's Phase 2 Lime. And uh, um, these aren't as big, but they're still really well detailed and extremely cool. I, <laughs> again, continuing with the problems with Russell, uh, I don't have, he's supposed to have a drum and a wrench but um, I took the opportunity to get them at a heavily discounted price. I think I only paid $80 for them. Uh, because of their size, they were these are less expensive. Uh, and then this just happened. The strap for Noodle's guitar just broke off, which you will see soon is a common theme with these later ones but she's supposed to have, like have a strap that so she could hold her guitar like this and also she's really difficult to stand up because for some reason yeah i know there's a lot of phase two art where she stands like this but they decide to incorporate this weird foot thing that she does into the actual figure so it's really difficult to get her to stand up she typically just falls backwards and it's, i typically just have her like a, up against Russell like that, but with her guitar. So, um, I forgot to mention this with the last ones, but there are like two, maybe three variations of these, um, both with phase one and phase two of like different coloring or they're like wearing different shirts. I don't really like find or feel a need to go after them because I mean, these are good enough as is. I don't need um, although Tootie's uh, Pink Rabbit says uh, shoot to ill shirt is pretty iconic, I took the chance to get the Murder of Crows shirt and um, I don't want to pay that much for any more, especially when they're literally the same thing. So Gorillas and Kid Robot, they, I, I don't know what happened, I don't know if there was a falling out or something but they didn't make another figure for a very long time and even then it was with super plastic who made this this statue of 2d from the trans music video so the marketing shows that his eyes light up just like you know in the trans music video but i could not figure out how where do you put in the batteries how do you turn it on and i read these things online saying that you remove his hair and i I was, I was like, that's stupid, why would you do that? And then I tried to, and it wouldn't come off. So I was like, okay, they're gaslighting me. Where where do I do it? No. It's true. You take off his hair. No, I think the battery's dead. Oh, uh, I know for a fact it's dead. Wait. Yeah, battery's dead. So, can't make his eyes come on, but they did. It was, it was really cool. Really cursed to see 2D without his hair, though. So with the success of the trans 2D figure, uh, with and also with the release of Song Machine, they figured they would take it upon themselves to make even more. And so they did. And this right here is my favorite. So this is 2D, taken from the Momentary Bliss video. And all the only one to be taken from the Momentary Bliss video, which is really strange. Uh, he, this one is my favorite because 2D is my favorite and I think this is just the cleanest, the best looking. Um, really, really happy with this one. And then we have Murdoch taken from the Desolée video and the rest of them are from the Desolée video. Once again, will not stand up. I ha like Whenever I display them, I have to set them up against the, the wall so that they don't fall over and break. 
because trust me, they easily break. But this is Murdoch, uh, as green as ever. Uh, and again, the the statue itself, the figure, is really really nice and really really clean. So like it's the the, the best. These, this is the best series of of figures. So it really pains me that they break easily and they um, fall over easily. Next up is Noodle, taken from the Desolée video. Uh, once again, really cleanly done. I really like the... Although, um, if there was one that they should have done different is her, because she has the Phase 2 haircut, which is fine. I would have preferred like a more modern look for it. We did eventually get one, but at the time I was a little disappointed. I still do like it though, especially the monster claw hands, like the the gloves. I think that's really nice. And then finally, this is what they should have done with all of them, is we have Russell with his own little his own little set. I just really like how he's sitting down so he doesn't fall. And then it's just really not, again, it's just really, really well done. This one was more expensive than the other ones because of all the extra bits, but it was, it was worth it. I really like how they gave him his own, like, drum set. But they also came with these pins, which uh, break super, super easy. I... Uh, 2D, I put him on my hat, and it, it was a matter of days that he was broken off. It saddened me because I really wish I could have just kept him in here knowing that he would have broke, but um, yeah, they're, they're still really nice. Too bad they're going to, like, they're stuck like this. So next up, we have Noodle in the Geep from Ares. Now this one is special because, uh, well, not only is it like an actual like car that you could like roll around, and also you could like turn on the headlights and yeah, the batteries are actually in this one. Uh, and also it's got like Noodle with her modern design. Well, at the time she really changed up uh, with Cracker Island. But also, this was super rare, or super, super limited. I don't remember to how many, but I've got 803. So next up, and the ones that I feel are the most unnecessary, is the Strange Times music video uh, set that they released. This just felt like them putting out whatever to, to make um, people buy them, you know? This... It doesn't feel like, like, oh yeah, Gorillaz fans would love this. It was like, I don't know, we've got a contract that we have to make Gorillaz figures every year or else we're going to lose it. So, like, I I don't know. I would If I were to do anything from Song Machine, I would have done something different. Although I guess this is the most uniform they look in all the, like, Song Machine videos, but I digress. Um, these are still really cool, but I just don't think they're necessary. They All of them also light up. So now you actually get to see what 2D looks like with the with the white eyes. They were also more expensive than like every other one. And, and to keep with the theme of things just not working, 
um, Murdoch, his eyes don't glow when they are supposed to. And it's always been like this since I got it. And finally, that leaves us with the super plastic minifigure set where they like, went through Gorillaz's 20 year long history and made some little tiny figures based off of iconic moments in the band's career. Sounds great on paper until you realize that they were in uh, mystery boxes. Only problem is these were $15 each. One figure is six, is $15. So imagine paying $15 and getting a character that you already have. You can buy a um, like a collection where you like get 16, I think, but that doesn't even come with all of them. So what I had to do was the ones that I didn't have, I bought on eBay with the exception of one. I don't have one and that is Dell. But other than that, I really do like them. I, I do like all of these. I think they're really nice and, and well modeled. And with that, that's my Gorillas collection. The only thing that I haven't shown is my shirts. So I'll, I'll throw that up while uh, I talk this little bit. I just wanted to say thank you because you guys are enjoying the Gorillas, the complete uh, story series that I've made. And um, you guys are giving me an outlet to talk about my, my hobby and my favorite band. And it's just really, really great to see how many views I got on that Cracker Island video, how many subscribers I got. The fact that I'm making money off of this now, that's literally insane. I never in my entire life thought I would, like, get that big. Um, especially in such a short amount of time. Hopefully you guys continue to enjoy my content because... It, I'll be going on to other stuff, and I hope that you guys stick around and enjoy that as well. It'll have the same love and care that I put into, uh, well, really all the videos that I make. Um, and then with that, that's been my entire Gorillaz collection. I hope that you enjoyed. Um, I even hope that this could be like a jumping off point for some like future collectors that want to get into Gorillaz collecting the same way that I was with uh, Huda Hoodlum's Revenge, which again, have to give another shout out to them for their amazing video. And um, yeah, that's it. Like if you enjoyed the video and subscribe for some more content, make sure to check out my Gorillaz The Full Story Explained. Even check out some other stuff like the short horror film I made. And uh, with that, I will uh, 